Welcome back. You may want to check in the morning, make sure your kids have school. The Inglewood School District was the first to announce that schools will close Monday as teachers take part in a day of action at the state capitol planned by the Colorado Education Association. The CEA is opposing legislation in the works that could hit teacher retirement pensions hard. It's no secret our teachers don't make enough money and most pay for classroom supplies out of their own pockets. Teachers have held walkouts and strikes in a handful of other states this spring with mixed results. And there will not be a legislative overhaul of Colorado school discipline rules this year, but we still wanted to take a closer look at the issue after a new analysis of disciplinary trends was released that found some pretty shocking disparities about our kids and how suspensions are divvied out. And here to talk about that is Ann Shimke, who writes for Chalkbeat, and Corinne Rivera Fowler of Padres Unidos, a group that focuses on educational equality. And, and let's start with you, since I know you wrote this article. And uh, there, as I said, some pretty shocking details in there. But let's first talk about rural versus metro, for example. What were the differences? Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting. Rural districts present a dichotomy. Some rural districts do not suspend any students at all. However, the highest suspending districts in the state are rural. Um, so Trinidad, for example, suspended 27 students per 100 last year, and that's a very high suspension and rate. And is there any analysis on how why that is? Um, not specifically with Trinidad, mm -hmm. I think. Um, statewide, um, a lot of teachers feel like they don't have the tools to handle challenging behavior. So suspensions often kind of what they feel like they have available as a last resort. I think what the numbers show is that suspension is not in fact a last resort in some districts. So talk about boys versus girls in sure. terms of suspension numbers. Yeah, so boys as a group, young boys are disproportionately suspended. So what I found was 86% um, of suspensions in kindergarten through second grade are given to boys. They obviously make up about half the student population. Um, when you dig a little deeper, there's very significant disparities for black boys, young black boys in Colorado. As and Hispanic boys as well. Correct. Okay, so uh, Corinne, I know this is one of the, the issues that is near and dear to your heart with Padres Unidos. Why, why is that? I mean, obviously no one really purposefully targets uh, black and Hispanic kids. Well, there have been studies that have come out recently. Um, last year, the Yale School of Education released a study on racial bias in early childhood education um, that began to uncover why the disparity exists for black and brown boys in our schools. Mm -hmm. um, you know, teachers may not have the cultural um, training to um, attend to a student's needs, and they see black boys who can be, you know, um, larger in size, louder than their white or female counterparts, they, they see them as a threat, really, and they, they approach them with a racial bias. Um, that findings um, showed nationally the same disparate um, suspension and expulsion issue for black and brown children under the age of eight, and those suspension rates being much higher no matter the population in the district. So you say teachers have a lack of cultural training? What does that mean? Well, they may just never have um, been surrounded by communities of color. And, you know, there are differences in the way that communities interact with each other, um, the way that um, communities speak. Um, and, you know, we have a real low number of teachers of color in our school system. So we believe that there are some racial biases and some cultural trainings that could help. So you think that would help if we had more diverse classrooms or more Certainly. diverse staff? Yes. Um, talk about each district. Do they have their own policies? Is there some kind of a uniform policy for discipline in our, in our state? Um, no, no, there's not. So as you mentioned, the bill last year was defeated. It would have curbed suspensions for young children statewide. Um, they did not reintroduce the bill this session. Um, they didn't find enough common ground with uh, rural schools that had opposed it. So really, it's a district by district situation, whether like so Denver Public Schools, for example, this year instituted a, instituted a policy curbing suspensions for preschool through third grade students. Mm -hmm. That's fairly mm -hmm. um, unusual, mm -hmm. though maybe we'll see more of it in the coming years. What is this doing to our kids, going back to our, our, our black and Hispanic 
boys especially who are suspended more frequently than anybody else. What is, what is this doing in, in our classrooms and to them as, as individuals? I think it's certainly um, contributing to the achievement gap that we see for black and brown children. Um, those numbers also just came out for our state and there certainly is a large gap that needs to be addressed. These children, you know, you think about someone who's getting kicked out of the classroom at age five um, and what that does on their emotional well-being. Um, they tend to feel now like they're a bad student. Mm. They may not want to return to the classroom. They feel like their peers are, you know, judging them or maybe better than them. And they go down the path of suspension and expulsion from there. Um, they will continue to act out. They might see um, the suspension as even a reward. It's kind of fun to go home and, and stay home with your grandma watching TV for the day. Mm. And so they may even create opportunities to get suspended and get out of class. So where's the parents' role in all of this? Where is their responsibility in, in trying to bridge this issue? We think that discipline is an opportunity to teach. Um, at Padres and Jovenes Unidos, we really focus on restorative practices, and we would like to see the classroom and the family and the student working together to address the root cause of whatever the student is dealing with, whether it's inside or outside of the classroom. So when a child um, you know, is having a difficult time, they need to restore that situation and the consequence needs to, needs to be addressed directly with the family, with the student, so that they learn what has been done wrong and then they move forward and grow from that. And is there anything the legislature, we have, we have very little time, is there anything the legislature should be looking at to, to address this issue? You know, as Ann said, scary. sorry, we worked on the issue last year and for the past two years, um, we were unable to find common ground with the Rural Alliance and the rural school districts. We visited many rural school districts and we are gonna continue to work over the summer to try to get support. So a lot more conversations need to be happening out there. Thank you both so much. We appreciate Thank you being you. here. We'll be right back.